today we are going to build a website it's going to look something like this right here uh, of course you can be able, you'll be able to change colors and whatever you want to do I'll, I'll go I'll go over as thoroughly as possible so this will be a little bit of a long vi uh, video anyhow what we're going to do here is we're going to have a, a web page with one two three four five six there's two containers inside here seven eight containers total we got a header title bar top navigation main container uh, two containers within main uh, a nav bar inside of a footer down here and we're going to use a web font we're going to self host a web font we'll show you how that where you, you can use a web font it's completely free free to use license to use and uh, you can self host it publish it with your website because people most likely won't have this font it's called Serena uh, on their computer but because of the way Dreamweaver works it will put the font right up with your website and they'll be able to see it and uh, we're going to have a on our navigation we'll have a CSS hover effect here both for top and bottom so let's get started if you need WordPress hosting I provide WordPress hosting for as low as five dollars a month I actually provide quite a bit more now you can see WordPress, Joomla, Drupal, Moodle, Mambo, PrestaShop, PHP, BB these have an installer to install them for you there's no special knowledge need I provide hosting accounts as low as five dollars a month I also provide virtual private servers and dedicated servers and if you want a five dollar account if that's what you're looking for you just simply click on the shared plans and you see it right there the starter so the first thing you'll want to do is you're going to want to get a new web page now I ha have my site on the ZAMP ZAMPP server on my computer there is a video at web my website skeeterz71.com it'll show you how to put a website put ZAMP on your computer and put a website on it but I've already got mine and I'm not going to go over that part in this video so first thing we're going to do is we're going to create an HTML HTML page excuse me we're not going to do it that way we're going to go file new HTML and because I'm going to use some HTML5 in here I'm going to select HTML5 and that's going to put this doc type up here to let you know to let browsers know it's an HTML5 now if you got your insert panel open you can use certainly use your inserts for what I'm about to do here and your CSS you'll need that open as well and uh, you can go to your Windows button if you don't have those ones you're going to want turned on you're going to want your properties turned on your CSS styles turned on your files turned on at minimum you will need that so uh, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to set up our container so we're going to insert a div now some people call this a wrapper I call it a container we're going to give it an ID of containers and everything we do is going to be put inside this container so I'm going to create me a little space here I'm going to go ahead and take this out because we don't need it and the very first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a header so I'm going to use HTML5 here and I'm going to type it in you'll notice I have code hitting on if you don't already this is Dreamweaver CS6 Dreamweaver CC may already have this it wouldn't surprise me if it does but Dreamweaver CS6 doesn't have HTML5 code hinting set up for you you have to do it yourself you can go up to the edit menu go to your tag libraries click on the plus sign create a new tag library you'll notice I call mine there it is HTML5 tags okay once you got your new tag library created you will go and click and you'll add a new tag just type the word in don't don't include this part right there it won't accept that just type the word in you can Google uh, all the HTML5 tags but for the purposes of this you just need the header and type it in just like that and nav just like that 
and footer just like that those are the only three we'll be working with in this video okay so then of course it will complete for me okay after the header we're going to create a title bar so we'll insert a div give it an ID of title bar and we'll go ahead and leave that information in there for now and I like to put when I in in the div I like to name it so I'm gonna put me a comment there that can't be that won't be seen by the human being so that's the title bar goes there Underneath the title bar, we're going to have a navigation bar. And we're going to give this an ID because we're going to have two navigation bars on this page, top and bottom. We're going to call give this one an ID of uh, we'll give this one an ID of top nav, so we can style it with our CSC. And then, of course, I'm going to. it there and after the top nav we're gonna have our main so we're gonna insert a div here give it an ID of main and we're gonna get rid of this content right here And we're going to insert another div and we're going to give it an ID of content one and we're going to insert another div right in main where we'll give it ID of content two if you remember I said we'll have two containers inside main Okay, and we're going to go ahead and end main here so I can remember where it's at. And we'll go ahead and end these two. one oh, this was our container did right I'm pretty sure yeah forgot to end that one so you can get a little tricky to figure out what's what if you don't put a little comment at the end of them so you can figure out what divs what And uh, at the end of main, we're going to create a footer. And inside the footer, we're going to break it apart. And we're going to put a, uh, we're going to insert a div. Uh, actually, it's going to be a nav with an ID. A bottom nav and we'll go ahead and close that and there we have the basic structure uh, of our page we'll go ahead and put bottom nav here so we can see it on the page and this one here was a header so we'll go ahead and put a header there so we can see it on the page as well so that is our basic uh, structure of our web page now we're going to get it all arranged correctly using CSS and that will be the next part of this video 
Okay, if you haven't already done so, go ahead and save your web page. Typically, you would save the home page as an index.html page. So let's get busy styling this now. I'm going to go ahead and split this open so we can see what we're doing. So basically, the way I like to style things is I like to go find a tag I'm styling here, like header, for example, and click on it. Open up my style sheet panel and it will go ahead and select that for me now we don't need the word container there uh, at all so I'm going to remove that out and we're going to go to the box settings now this page actually first we need to do container don't we so let's let's do container first click on container okay so we're going to go to the box and this is going to be 1024 by 768 and we're going to set margins right and left to auto so it centers up in the browser instead of being pushed to the left okay so now we have it 1024 by 768 and if you look at it, you see this outside part is our container. It goes all the way down there. Now we're going to arrange the rest of this stuff within this container where it belongs. So we're going to start with header. You can click right here or click right here or go to your code like I like to do and click right there. And it'll pull it up for you. We're going to go ahead and remove the word container. We really don't need it there. All right. So we're going to just go ahead and set the default. It's going to set it up. And this is we're going to go to the box model. The width is going to be 1024. And we're going to make the height of this 125 pixels. Now, when we get into do, working on the paddings and margins and stuff in this st stuff later, we're going to make adjustments to all this. But I want to do that at that time so we can know why we're doing what we're doing. So and uh, let's go ahead and give the background color to the header let's make it black and for the type we'll go ahead and make it white just so we can see what's going on here there, there's what we have right now so now for the title bar we're going to style it so we're going to go in we're going to find the tag for the title bar and we're just going to click on it we're going to go to our style sheet and again we don't need to work container so we're going to remove container and we're going to click OK and we're going to go to the box and the width is going to be 1024 and height we're going to make this uh, 50 pixels 50 pixels Again, we're going to make some adjustments to this later, but for now, we're just kind of getting everything right where we want it. And you'll notice, again, it adjusted that for us. Okay, so the next thing we want to do is we want to go to main. And we're going to want to click on the word there, and we're going to create a new style sheet. Again, we don't need a word container there. So we're going to take that out, except the default and main main is going to be 1024 by 448 and again we're not going to mess with the padding or anything right at this moment so now let's take a look here you'll notice we got main it's right here And main includes these two right here, so we're going to style these next the content one and content two. So we'll go to content one, click on it, click on style sheet, and we'll leave main on there for readability purposes. When you glance quickly at the style sheet, you'll realize that content one belongs inside of main. The reason why we're removing containers is because you know everything belongs inside of containers. So we're going to just remove container. We're going to keep main there. We're going to go to the box. 
and we know that the, the width of our main container is 1024 so we're going to divide that into two it's going to be 512 and we know the height of our main container is going to be uh, what is it 448 and the height of our container is 448 and I'm going to go ahead and apply that and we're going to, and you'll see here We're about to add some color to everything so you can see it a little bit better. The, uh, content one's there. Content two got shoved underneath. We're going to fix that. But let's go ahead and uh, go ahead and do content two. It's going to, again, it's going to be 512. We'll clip off container there. We don't need that. And that's going to be, we're going to go to box width. It's going to be 512. And high is going to be 448. And we're going to apply that. And we're going to take a look. Let me go ahead. Let's color in some of this stuff real quick. So it's a little bit easier. We're going to leave the title bar. We'll go to the title bar here. And we're going to create a background color. And it is going to be pound FFCC00. Okay. And we're going to go ahead and color in main. Did we skip top nav? We did skip top nav. Let's first let's go to top nav. Click on top nav. And we'll get rid of word container. Top nav is going to be 1024, and we're going to make give it a height of 45. We're going to leave it white, but we're going to put some words in here so we can see it. So we can just see the separation. We're going to leave that one white. All right, now let's go to main. Instead of giving a main a background color, we'll give content one and con content one a background color, and we'll leave content two white so you can see what's about to happen. So we're going to give content one a background color. Whoops. Let's go ahead. Same color, FFCC00. All right, so let's take a look at what we got. And you'll notice that content two is still shoved up underneath content one. So what we're going to do is we're going to pin content one all the way to the left in the CSS. Here's how we do that. We go to the box model and we'll go float left. All right, we're, we've pinned content one to the left. We're going to pin content two to the right. So let's go ahead and content two box and we're going to float right. Alright, so now you see the content 2 is over here, contents 1 is over here. Now we can go ahead and color in content 2 with the same color, background, FFCC00. And there we go. Alright, now the bottom nav. Let's go ahead and go back to the code. Make sure to take a look here. Actually, let's start with footer. We'll style the footer. Footer will be 1024 by 100. And again, we can take the word container off. This will be 1024 by 100. Let's see what we have here. And the bottom nav is going to be inside. And we're going to style the bottom nav at the end. We're going to do some things to it. Okay, so let's take a look see what we got here. We got the header, title bar, top nav, uh, content one, content two, bottom nav located within the footer. So we pretty much got these styled the way we want them. 
well, we'll go we'll go ahead and style bottom now. So we just click there. Alrighty, bottom nav. Oops, I forgot my equal sign. Always messes up when you don't put that in there. There we go. That's what I want. And just so we'll know that we'll leave footer in there so we'll know that that's with the bottom nav. And we'll go ahead and give this a width of two four. And we'll give it a height of one half the footer. The footer was 100, so we're going to give this one a 50 pixel height. All right, now let's take a final look at it. And there we go. All right, let me see here. Let's take a look. We got everything. It looks like we got everything positioned where we want it. And so now for the next things we're going to do, we're going to, first thing we're going to do, we're going to work on the header. And that will be the next part of this video. All right, on this next part of the video, we're going to style the header. And we're going to include a web font. It's absolutely free. It's a, a license. You can use it. It comes with the license. And it's called Serena. First thing we want to do is we want to go to Google Web Fonts. And we're going to type in Serena, S-A-R-I-N-A, -A, and there it is. And we'll add to our collection. And now we want to download it. Zip file. Save it somewhere. Ah, what's wrong here? There we go. And I'm just going to save it. I've already got saved once, so I'm just going to throw it into a folder. I've already got it on mine, but I'm going to walk you through the steps here. So we're going to save, open. Let's go back to the folder. There it is. Let's go ahead and extract it. And this is what we're looking for. Now we want to go to Font Squirrel. So, because I can't spell squirrel, I'll type it in, and it'll finish it for me. There we go. Font squirrel, we're going to cl click on the web font generator. And we're going to select, make sure optimal is selected. And we're going to tick yes, we're uploading a legal font. We're going to add our web font. Okay. And we're going to go to the original folder here, find our Serena folder, and we're going to double click on that, and it's going to take a minute, for mine it's pretty quick, and then we're going to download the kit. And it takes a minute for it to download the kit, web kit, web font kit. And we're going to save it. And we're going to save it in the Serena folder. Let's go ahead and close that out. Now there's some things I want to do before we do this web font. What we're going to do is we're going to create a couple, couple quick styles. Put them on the body. Let's go up here. And add... A little bit of default body information. All right, I know that my font family is going to be Arial and whatnot. Uh, my default font size is going to be 14 pixels. Line height, the distance between paragraphs is going to be 1.5 ems, which is about one and a half times the 14 pixels. Let's go ahead and put color up there where it belongs. There we go. I make this an H1. 
if you don't have your properties bar go up to windows and make sure you have your properties selected so we're going to have H1 here and we'll make this H2 So we have our H1 and our H2. So we're going to go ahead, select H1. We'll make a style for it. We can remove everything but the H1 there. And we're going to first thing we're going to do is we're going to go to Edit Font List. Ignore that word there because I have removed it from my machine. So I could go through this. Add a font list, web fonts, add font. We'll call it Serena. And we're going to open up the file here. There it is, web font kit. And there's the EOT. That's the one we're looking for, EOT. Google is going to figure out the rest of them just from that one EOT right there. So go ahead and select that. And you notice how Google, f f um, excuse me, Google. Dreamweaver is going to figure it out. Go ahead and say you got it licensed. I say OK. And then done. And then go down here. Find it. Add it. It come up here. Say OK. OK. And apply. If you look at it. Now don't worry about the way it looks right now because we're gonna we're gonna work on that, make it look a little bit better. But in our H1, what happened to our H1 tag? There it is. H1, we got Serena. Now we're gonna go to box and we're gonna set uh, margins to zero. Take out the spacing that that uh, that uh, your H1 tag has built in it to it naturally. You'll notice H2 separated us right here because of its spacing. So we're going to go to the H2 tag. Click on it, and we're going to remove the margins on that as well. And it brings it up there. Now we'll we'll adjust this where it all belongs with some padding here in a little bit. Now because I like to have my stuff kind of where everything belongs, I'm gonna move this on up here, right under body, and move that one right up under body. So we we'll go look and we see we have our defaults right here for a web page set up now we're going to go ahead and let's set a size for h2 and h1 h1 we're going to set it to type font size we're going to make it four ems about four times the size of the uh this is for the h1 now we'll make it four times the size of the default font and H2, we're going to make it about one and three quarters times the size. So, EMs. All right. Now, let's go ahead and get back into here. Let's change this word here. We'll change it to option. And you'll notice how it's like that. All right, now let's go back and let's go to our header. Let's go to the box. And you'll notice, I'm going to show you something here. Let me pull this off to the side. What we want to do is we want to drop this down and to the right some. So we're going to add padding to the top. We'll just say we're going to add 35 pixels of padding to the top. Let's untick that so it's 
we don't do the same thing to everything and we'll add uh, 35 pixels to the left now watch what happens to the top navigation box when I do this you'll notice that it is now extending beyond everything because when you add padding you're actually increasing the size of your box your whatever you added in padding is going to be uh, added to the actual size of your box so you so what we need to do in order to get this right we need to go back in here and uh, on the top on our height top to bottom would be height we need to subtract 35 pixels so that would be what 100 that'd be 95 right 95 plus 35 is 125 okay and for the width be a uh, I can't add in my mind worth of crap so let's minus 35 be 989 width would be 989 so that should bring it all back right where it was and it did and this is what it's actually going to look like so let's deal with uh so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to style our title bar. So we're going to first add the correct words here. And we're going to take a look at our uh, go ahead and style this. So we're going to style the uh, title bar. And we're going to say type Oh, excuse me. Block. And we're going to text align center. You notice it moved to the center. And we're going to go to the box. And again, remember, we're going to add some padding. So we're adding to the width. And whatever we add to the, to the top here, we're going to have to subtract from the height. So we're going to say 15 pixels. So that should be 35, right? Let's see how that looks. And what did we do here? Oh, we forgot to untick. Yeah, it's, it's easy to forget to do that. You to untick, do everything. So I'm gonna go ahead for now. Let's go back to zero. Get it back to where it was. Then untick that. Let's put 15 pixels from the top. And that puts it back where it's supposed to be. And while I'm thinking about it, I think our word option could be a little bit bigger. So uh, let's go in here and make this, let's make this 4.5 EMs. There we go, that's much better. Okay, so now we have our header styled we have our title bar style now it's time for the navigation so let's let's give a let's give a home and let's say what we're going to call portfolio portfolio let's say about us and contact us Now let's split this open so we can see what's going on here. So let's highlight home and create a temporary link by putting a pound sign in the link here. And then portfolio, same thing. About us, the same thing. And contact us, same thing. Let's go ahead and uh, stack these up. You gotta remember that in HTML, uh, you can rearrange stuff for readability, and it's not gonna affect the way it displays at all in the browser.
so it's okay to do this it's not going to stack it up on your page so there's our four links there within our navigation within our top nav navigation now we need to style these four links so it does we're going to style some color give it a hover effect give it some spacing so that's the next step okay so let's click on our first link here and we're going to take out and this is going to style them all the same so we're going to just take out the uh, container part because everything belongs to the container let's let's go to a uh, Titan let's give it a color yeah I do that every time our color will be pound F 5A06 E and our uh, font family is taken on the body font okay and text decoration we'll get none's gonna get rid of the underline see how it got rid of the underline right there so text decoration is gonna be none uh, text transform we're gonna make it all uppercase see there it goes uppercase and font weight we're gonna make bold and we're gonna to go to block and we're gonna display in line block and we're gonna to go to box and we're gonna give a margin uh, right margin the sun tick right margin it's gonna be 15 okay so we got the right margin 15 let's give it some top padding of say 10 pixels and again I forgot to untick so let's go back zero so untick that the top nav up top here and we're going to do the box here we're going to give it a padding say of five pixels and so we'll shrink this to 40 and again I forgot to untick so let's make it all back to zero, untick, do that every time. That was, and there's what we're looking at right now. I probably need to give it some left padding too. So let's give it some left padding. Let's give it 15 pixels of left padding. So. Right, zero zero nine. There we go. And there's a reason I'm doing this. We're gonna put a radius on those corners, so we wanted to pull that out. We we'll probably give it a little more padding too. So let's do that. Let's give it a little more top padding. Let's say ten, and we'll change that to thirty-five. There we go. That looks better. Much better. Alright. Now we want to get that hover effect. Go ahead. Be sure to save frequently. We want to get that hover effect. So let's go find our links again. Click on it again. Because this will be for top and bottom. Well, no. No, it's going to be two different sizes. So never mind. Let's keep top nav A. And at the end of A, colon hover. and we want to go to border we're going to untick all these boxes up top and we're going to give a bottom border it's going to be solid and we're going to make it two pixels color right there okay so now this is what we have when you hover okay our top navigation has been styled save again now it's time to come into main. First thing I want to do with main, actually we're going to have to do this somewhere else. I, I forgot about needing to put the radius onto uh, our container there, so we're going to need to put another wrapper right inside of main. We're going to insert a div tag. And we'll give this inner main 
idea of intermain. Let's go ahead and end it. All right, and let's go ahead and take this div tag. It started, starts right after main, and it's going to end right before main. So it's going to end right in here. And we're going to go ahead and take a look what we got here. Content for inner main goes here. Oh, yeah. And also go to your, I already did it, but go to your content one, content two, go to your background colors and remove those colors we put in earlier. Okay. So we're going to go back to, uh, back to our code here. And we're going to remove this line here. We don't need that. And we're going to click on enter main. We're going to create a new rule, a new CSS. And we can just take out everything but enter main. And we're going to give it the same width and height as main. So it's going to be 1024. What is it? 448, I believe. And we're going to give it a background color. We'll put our background color in FFCC 00. We'll apply, and this is what we have now. So, leave it in live view for what we're going to do next. Just go ahead and leave it in live view, and we're going to go find inner main. And I want to move top nav right there where it belongs. All right, I like to have things in order, but anyhow, click on inner main. We're going to add a new property. You can't do it from the well, you can't add the radius from the properties box here anywhere. You have to do it from down here. So we're going to add a property, border radius. We're just going to type in the word border so it gets us close. And we're going to look for, there it is, border radius. And we're just going to play around with some numbers. Let's, let's see what 25 pixels looks like. Let's try 15. Yeah, we'll go with 15 pixels for this. So here we have our border radius. We left left it checked, same for all. So now we have, have the radius here. Let's go back to this view here. And let's go ahead and take this out. Now I have a picture that I'm going to insert that I happen to know is 500 pixels wide. And you should always give alternate text for your pictures. And that is a picture's five, uh, 500 pixels wide. I'm going to want to add a 72 pixel top and side padding. So let's go to content one. And we're going to add 72 pixels here. And there I go doing it again. So let's go ahead and stick zero back in. Top and left gonna be 72 pixels. Now remember we added that to the box so we don't have to take it out of our width and our height. So let me pull up my calculator because I'm not real good at doing numbers in my head. Two minus 72. 440. And 48, 376, and we're going to apply. And you'll notice it went over here, so we're going to have to adjust uh, container number two. We're going to need to make it 72 pixels smaller than what it was. So, to get everything to fit right. So, width is 512. What was. See, that's, my memory is not very long. So, 512 minus 72. 
440. Okay, so we'll make this width 440. And let's see how that's working out. Is that working out right? That is not working out right. Let's see what it where did I go wrong on my math? Looks like we got looks like this box is right, this box is wrong. So we're gonna have to add seventy two I I must have done something wrong with the math, but let's add seventy two pixels to that. I did something wrong, I'm not exactly sure. So 440 plus 72, 512. Well, that, that come out working out right. We got that buttered up there right. Go figure. Sometimes I confuse myself, but anyhow, we got that right now. And we'll see what it looks like in live view. Alright, so now I'm going to go grab some uh, Lorem Ipsum. We'll go pork Lorem Ipsum. Just a little humor here. It's a uh, uses all different kinds of meats and stuff so let's grab about three paragraphs of this and put it on the other side and let's go ahead and call this street scene give it a heading Street scene, we'll make that an H2. And if you remember, we set our margins to zero when we did that, so it pulled it right on up top there. And we're gonna give it, we're gonna give this container 72 padding from the top and about 15 from the side. So, box. Top, we're gonna go 72, and there I go doing it again. Zero it out. I do it every time. Now let's take a look, see what it did. See, it pushed it down below there. So we need to adjust the box for that. Now we got the x height, of the street scene of the fonts here. The x height is the same as the picture. So let's go back. And let's shrink our box up. So height 448 minus 72. Three seventy-six. Is that not right? Main content too should be that should be right. Ah, I see why it didn't work. We forgot to put overflow property on here. Uh, positioning overflow to hidden. That should fix that. Yep. It clips your text there. So it forces you to have to actually uh, adjust your text to fit or adjust your container. So that's how you keep overflow from happening by that right there. All right, so we got that that set up right. All right, all we have left to do now is our bottom navigation and footer. So we're gonna say we'll say terms of service. And we'll do uh, privacy policy. Let's do partners. All right. So let's go ahead and make some temporary links with these. So I'm going to highlight, 
put a pound sign in. And another pound sign. And another pound sign. And we got our temporary leaks, uh, leaks, links. And let's go ahead and arrange this where we can see it a little bit better. All right, now we got our temporary links. Let's go to the foot or bottom nav. Let's give our font color F5 pound F5A06E. And text dec decoration is going to be none. We're going to go to block. We'll text align center. And we're going to display as block. Instead of inline block, it's going to be blocked. That way it moves our stuff center. And of course, I needed to put my color on my link and not on that. So we can go ahead and remove the color from here. We'll remove it from here. We're going to put it on the actual link itself. And again, we're going to click there. We'll create a new rule. We'll take out everything but bottom nav A. We'll put the color there. And let's take transform to uppercase. And uh, no style. Font weight bold. Yep. And we need to get some padding in there. So we're going to put some padding on the bottom nav. And we'll say, let's put uh, 10 pixels of padding at the top, which means we need to reduce this. And of course, I did it again. Every time I do that. And we're going to reduce this by 10, so that's going to be 40. Okay, we have that. And now we're going to click in our link one more time and create the hover effect. And we're going to clear out this. And we're going to put a colon after A, colon, and then hover. And we're just going to go to the border, untick everything. And width is going to be solid for uh, style. Width is going to be two pixels. And the color, we got the color already. Pound F5A06E. And let's see how that works. Alright. And we're going to get some space between here. So we're going to go to the bottom nav. A anchor link there let's give margin space 15 pixels uh, leave to the right let's see how that looks yep there we go perfect and there you go now I'm not going to do this in this video but I have we had made the footer a little bit wider so you could go in and you could insert your Facebook, tweet, uh, Twitter, and whatnot social icons down here if you would like to into this part of the footer. That's why I left that extra space there. And now let's go ahead and look, see what we got. Go back to the design view. It's in live view. All of our hovers are working. We got our text in there we got our picture off the corner here I probably put a little too much padding on that picture so we could actually go in and adjust that picture uh, content one padding so let's make it 60 so we can add 12 here 76 86 88 
that should be right okay so we put the box at 376 get the height right here and to get the width right we got this box here see how we did this okay content one what did we do to content one We meant to subtract 12. We're going to put that back to 60. So we're going to apply. Okay. And right, that looks a little better. So there we go. You got to play around with a pad ink. So, but anyhow, let's take a look at it in our browser. And there it is. Well, we do. We have to fix that padding. So let's fix that padding real quick. Content two. We need a right padding. So we'll make a right padding of 15 pixels. And that means we need to subtract 15 pixels from the width, right? So we. If, uh, 25425 that should be right uh, let's see how that works oh, that's right I gotta reload reload it that's much better that's all there is to it I'm sorry I got confused a little bit on it, but I have to think out the padding sometimes because it really, really does change things. Have a good day.